This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Rosalind Wills of Silver Spring, Maryland, on September 22, 2006. The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri. Translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Paradiso, Canto 12 to Canto 16. Canto 12. Soon as the blessed flame had taken up the final word to give it utterance, began the holy millstone to revolve, and in its gyre had not turned wholly round before another in a ring enclosed it, and motion joined to motion, song to song. Song that as greatly doth transcend our muses, our sirens in those dulcet clarions, as primal splendor that which is reflected, and as our span doth thwart a tender cloud two rainbows parallel and like in color, when Juno to her handmaid gives command, the one without born of the one within, like to the speaking of that vagrant one whom love consumed as doth the sun the vapors. And make the people here, through covenant, God set with Noah presageful of the world, that shall no more be covered with a flood. In such wise of those sempiternal roses the garlands twain encompassed us about, and thus the outer to the inner answered. After the dance and other grand rejoicings, both of the singing and the flaming forth, effulgence with effulgence, blithe and tender, together at once with one accord had stopped, even as the eyes that as volition moves them must needs together shut and lift themselves. Out of the heart of one of the new lights there came a voice, that needle to the star made me appear in turning thitherward and it began, The love that makes me fair draws me to speak about the other leader, by whom so well is spoken here of mine. Tis right where one is to bring in the other, that as they were united in their warfare, together likewise may their glory shine. The soldiery of Christ, which it had cost so dear to arm again behind the standard, moved slow and doubtful and in numbers few. When the emperor who reigneth evermore provided for the host that was in peril, through grace alone, and not that it was worthy. And as was said, he to his bride brought succor, with champions twain, at whose deed, at whose word, the straggling people were together drawn. Within that region where the sweet west wind rises to open the new leaves, wherewith Europe is seen to clothe herself afresh, not far off from the beating of the waves behind which in his long career the sun sometimes conceals himself from every man, is situate the fortunate Calahora, under protection of the mighty shield in which the lion subject is and sovereign. Therein was born the amorous paramour of Christian faith, the athlete consecrate, kind to his own and cruel to his foes, and when it was created was his mind replete with such a living energy that in his mother her it made prophetic. As soon as the espousals were complete between him and the faith at holy font, where they with mutual safety dowered each other, the woman who for him had given assent saw in a dream the admirable fruit that issue would from him and from his heirs, and that he might be construed as he was, a spirit from this place went forth to name him, with his possessive whose he wholly was. Dominic was he called, and him I speak of, even as of the husbandman whom Christ elected to his garden to assist him. Envoy and servant sooth he seemed of Christ, for the first love made manifest in him was the first counsel that was given by Christ. Silent and wakeful many a time was he, discovered by his nurse upon the ground, as if he would have said, For this I came. O thou his father, Felix, verily! O thou his mother, verily, Joanna! If this interpreted means as is said. Not for the world which people toil for now, in following Ostiense and Tadio, but through his longing after the true manner. He in short time became so great a teacher that he began to go about the vineyard, which fadeth soon if faithless be the dresser, and of the sea that once was more benignant unto the righteous poor, not through itself but him who sits there and degenerates, not to dispense or two or three for six, not any fortune of first vacancy, non decimas que sunt pauperum dei. He asked for, but against the errant world, permission to do battle for the seed, of which these four and twenty plants surround thee. Then with the doctrine and the will together, with office apostolical he moved, like torrent, which some lofty vein outpresses, and in among the shoots heretical his impetus with greater fury smote, wherever the resistance was the greatest. Of him were made thereafter diverse runnels, whereby the garden Catholic is watered, so that more living its plantations stand. 
of such the one wheel of the bygo was in which the holy church itself defended and in the field its civic battle won truly full manifest should be to thee the excellence of the other unto whom thomas so courteous was before my coming but still the orbit which the highest part of its circumference made is derelict so that the mould is where was once the crust his family that had straightforward moved with feet upon his footprints are turned round so that they set the point upon the heel and soon aware they will be of the harvest of this bad husbandry when shall the tares complain the granary is taken from them yet say i he who searcheth leaf by leaf our volume through would still some page discover where he could read i am as i am wont twill not be from casal nor aquasparta from whence come such unto the written word that one avoids it and the other narrows bonaventura of banioreggio's life am i who always in great offices postponed considerations sinister here are illuminato and agostino who of the first barefooted beggars were that with the cord the friends of god became hugh of saint victor is among them here and peter mangiador and peter of spain who down below in volumes twelve is shining nathan the seer and metropolitan chrysostom and anselmus and donatus who deigned to lay his hand to the first art here is robanus and beside me here shines the calabrian abbot joachim he with the spirit of prophecy endowed to celebrate so great a paladin have moved me the impassioned courtesy and the discreet discourses of friar thomas and with me they have moved this company canto thirteen let him imagine who would well conceive what now i saw and let him while i speak retain the image as a steadfast rock the fifteen stars that in their diverse regions the sky enliven with a light so great that it transcends all clusters of the air let him the wane imagine unto which our vault of heaven sufficeth night and day so that in turning of its pole it fails not let him the mouth imagine of the horn that in the point beginneth of the axis round about which the primal wheel revolves to have fashioned of themselves two signs in heaven like unto that which minus's daughter made the moment when she felt the frost of death and one to have its rays within the other and both to whirl themselves in such a manner that one should forward go the other backward and he will have some shadowing forth of that true constellation and the double dance that circled round the point at which i was because it is as much beyond our want as swifter than the motion of the kiana moveth the heaven that all the rest outspeeds there sang they neither bacchus nor apollo but in the divine nature persons three and in one person the divine and human the singing and the dance fulfilled their measure and unto us those holy lights gave need growing in happiness from care to care then broke the silence of those saints concordant the light in which the admirable life of god's own mendicant was told to me and said now that one straw is trodden on now that its seed is garnered up already sweet love invites me to thresh out the other into that bosom thou believest whence was drawn the rib to form the beauteous cheek whose taste to all the world is costing dear and into that which by the lance transfixed before and since such satisfaction made that it weighs down the balance of all sin whate'er of light it has to human nature been lawful to possess was all infused by the same power that both of them created and hence at what i said above dost wonder when i narrated that no second had the good which in the fifth light is enclosed now ope thine eyes to what i answer thee and thou shalt see thy creed and my discourse fit in the truth as centre in a circle that which can die and that which dieth not are nothing but the splendour of the idea which by his love our lord brings into being because that living light which from its fount effulgent flows so that it disunites not from him nor from the love in them entrined though its own goodness reunites its rays in nine subsistences as in a mirror itself eternally remaining one thence it descends to the last potencies downward from act to act becoming such that only brief contingencies it makes and these contingencies i hold to be things generated which the heaven produces by its own motion with seed and without neither the wax nor that which tempers it remains immutable and hence beneath the ideal signet more and less shines through therefore it happens that the self-same tree after its kind bears worse and better fruit and ye are born with characters diverse if in perfection tempered were the wax and were the heaven in its supremest virtue the brilliance of the seal would all appear but nature gives it ever more deficient 
in the like manner working as the artist who has the skill of art and hand that trembles. If then the fervent love, the vision clear, of primal virtue do dispose and seal, perfection absolute is there acquired. Thus was of old the earth created worthy of all and every animal perfection, and thus the virgin was impregnate made. So that thine own opinion I commend, that human nature never yet has been nor will be what it was in those two persons. Now if no farther forth I should proceed, then in what way was he without a peer, would be the first beginning of thy words. But that may well appear what now appears not. Think who he was, and what occasion moved him to make request, when it was told him, Ask. I have not so spoken that thou canst not see clearly he was a king who asked for wisdom, that he might be sufficiently a king. "'Twas not to know the number in which are the motors here above, "'or if necesse with a contingent air necesse make, "'non si es dare primo motum esse, "'or if in semicircle can be made triangle "'so that it have no right angle. "'Whence if thou notice this and what I said, "'a regal prudence is that peerless seeing "'in which the shaft of my intention strikes. "'And if on rose thou turnest thy clear eyes, "'thou'lt see that it has reference alone "'to kings who are many, and the good are rare.' With this distinction take thou what I said, and thus it can consist with thy belief of the first father and of our delight. And led shall this be always to thy feet, to make thee like a weary man move slowly, both to the yes and no thou seest not. For very low among the fools is he, who affirms without distinction, or denies as well in one as in the other case, because it happens that full often bends current opinion in the false direction, and then the feelings bind the intellect. Far more than uselessly he leaves the shore, since he returneth not the same he went, who fishes for the truth and has no skill. And in the world proofs manifest thereof, Parmenides, Melissus, Brissus are, and many who went on and knew not whither. Thus did Sibelius, Arius, and those fools who have been even as swords unto the scriptures, in rendering distorted their straight faces. Nor yet shall people be too confident in judging, even as he is who doth count the corn in field or ever it be ripe. For I have seen all winter long the thorn first show itself intractable and fierce, and after bear the rose upon its top. And I have seen a ship direct and swift run o'er the sea throughout its course entire to perish at the harbour's mouth at last. Let not Dame Bertha nor Sir Martin think, seeing one steal another offering make, to see them in the arbitrament divine. For one may rise and fall the other may. Canto fourteen. From centre unto rim, from rim to centre, in a round vase the water moves itself, as from without tis struck or from within. Into my mind upon a sudden dropped what I am saying at the moment when silent became the glorious life of Thomas, because of the resemblance that was born of his discourse and that of Beatrice, whom after him it pleased thus to begin. This man has need, and does not tell you so, nor with the voice nor even in his thought, of going to the root of one truth more. Declare unto him if the light wherewith blossoms your substance shall remain with you eternally the same that it is now. And if it do remain, say in what manner, after ye are again made visible, it can be that it injure not your sight. As by a greater gladness urged and drawn, they who are dancing in a ring sometimes uplift their voices and their motions quicken, so at that orison devout and prompt, the holy circles a new joy displayed in their revolving and their wondrous song. Whoso lamenteth him that here we die that we may live above, has never there seen the refreshment of the eternal reign. The one and two and three who ever liveth, and reigneth ever in three and two and one, not circumscribed in all things circumscribing. Three several times was chanted by each one among those spirits, with such melody that for all merit it were just reward. And in the lustre most divine of all, the lesser ring, I heard a modest voice, such as perhaps the angels was to Mary, answer, As long as the festivity of paradise shall be, so long our love shall radiate round about us such a vesture. Its brightness is proportioned to the ardour, the ardour to the vision, and the vision equals what grace it has above its worth. When glorious and sanctified our flesh is reassumed, then shall our persons be more pleasing by their being all complete. For will increase whate'er bestows on us of light gratuitous the good supreme, light which enables us to look on him. Therefore the vision must perforce increase, increase the ardour which from that is kindled, increase the radiance which from this proceeds. 
but even as a coal that sends forth flame, and by its vivid whiteness overpowers it, so that its own appearance it maintains, thus the effulgence that surrounds us now shall be o'erpowered in aspect by the flesh, which still to-day the earth doth cover up. Nor can so great a splendor weary us, for strong will be the organs of the body to everything which hath the power to please us. So sudden and alert appeared to me both one and the other choir to say Amen, that well they showed desire for their dead bodies, nor so for them perhaps, but for the mothers, the fathers, and the rest who had been dear or ever they became eternal flames. And lo, all round about of equal brightness arose a lustre over what was there, like a horizon that is clearing up. And as it rise of early eve begins along the welkin new appearances, so that the sight seems real and unreal, it seemed to me that new subsistences began there to be seen, and make a circle outside the other two circumferences. O oh, very sparkling of the Holy Spirit, how sudden and incandescent it became unto mine eyes that vanquished bore it not! But Beatrice, so beautiful and smiling, appeared to me, that with the other sights that followed not my memory I must leave her. Then to uplift themselves mine eyes resumed the power, and I beheld myself translated to higher salvation with my lady only. Well was I aware that I was more uplifted by the enkindled smiling of the star that seemed to me more ruddy than its wont. With all my heart, and in that dialect which is the same in all, such holocaust to God I made as the new grace beseemed, and not yet from my bosom was exhausted the ardour of sacrifice, before I knew this offering was accepted and auspicious. For with so great a lustre and so red splendours appeared to me in twofold rays, I said, O oh, Helios, who dost so adorn them! Even as distinct with less and greater lights glimmers between the two poles of the world, the galaxy that maketh wise men doubt. Thus constellated in the depths of Mars those rays describe the venerable sign that quadrants joining in a circle make. Here doth my memory overcome my genius, for on that cross as leaven gleamed forth Christ, so that I cannot find in sample worthy. But he who takes his cross and follows Christ again will pardon me what I omit, seeing in that aurora lighten Christ." From horn to horn and twixt the top and base lights were in motion, brightly scintillating as they together met and passed each other. Thus level and aslant and swift and slow we here behold, renewing still the sight, the particles of bodies long and short. Across the sunbeam move, wherewith is listed sometimes the shade, which for their own defence people with cunning and with art contrive. And as a lute and harp, a cord and strung with many strings, a dulcet tinkling make, to him by whom the notes are not distinguished, so from the lights that there to me appeared, up gathered through the cross a melody, which wrapped me, not distinguishing the hymn. Well was I where it was of lofty laud, because there came to me, Arise and conquer, as unto him who hears and comprehends not. So much enamoured I became therewith, that until then there was not anything that e'er had fettered me with such sweet bonds. Perhaps my word appears somewhat too bold, postponing the delight of those fair eyes into which gazing my desire has rest. But who bethinks him that the living seals of every beauty grow in power ascending, and that I there had not turned round to those, can me excuse if I myself accuse to excuse myself, and see that I speak truly? For here the holy joy is not disclosed, because ascending it becomes more pure. Canto fifteen. A will benign in which reveals itself ever the love that righteously inspires, as in the iniquitous cupidity, silence imposed upon that dulcet lyre and quieted the consecrated chords that heaven's right hand doth tighten and relax. How unto just entreaty shall be deaf those substances which, to give me desire of praying them, with one accord grew silent? Tis well that without end he should lament, who for the love of thing that doth not last eternally despoils him of that love. As through the pure and tranquil evening air there shoots from time to time a sudden fire, moving the eyes that steadfast were before, and seems to be a star that changeth place, except that in the part where it is kindled nothing is missed, and this endureth little. So from the horn that to the right extends unto that cross's foot there ran a star, out of the constellation shining there, nor was the gem dissevered from its ribbon, but down the radiant fillet ran along, so that fire seemed it behind alabaster. Thus piteous did Anchises' shade reach forward, if any faith our greatest muse deserve, when in Elysium he his son perceived. 
O sanguis meus, o superinfusa gratia dei, sicut tibi, qui bis unquam coeli janua reclusa. Thus that effulgence once I gave it heed, then round unto my lady turned my sight, and on this side and that was stupefied, for in her eyes was burning such a smile, that with mine own methought I touched the bottom both of my grace and of my paradise. Then pleasant to the hearing and the sight, the spirit joined to its beginning things I understood not, so profound it spake. Nor did it hide itself from me by choice, but by necessity, for its conception above the mark of mortals set itself. And when the bow of burning sympathy was so far slackened, that its speech descended towards the mark of our intelligence, the first thing that was understood by me was, Benedite be thou, O trine and one, who hast unto my seed so courteous been. And it continued, Hunger long and grateful, drawn from the reading of the mighty volume wherein is never changed the white nor dark, thou hast appeased my son within this light, in which I speak to thee, by grace of her who to this lofty flight with plumage clothed thee. Thou thinkest that to me thy thought doth pass from him who is the first, as from the unit, if that be known, ray out the five and six. And therefore, who I am thou askest not, and why I seem more joyous unto thee than any other of this gladsome crowd. Thou think'st the truth, because the small and great of this existence look into the mirror, wherein before thou think'st thy thought thou showest. But that the sacred love in which I watch with sight perpetual, and which makes me thirst with sweet desire, may better be fulfilled. Now let thy voice secure and frank and glad proclaim the wishes, the desire proclaim to which my answer is decreed already. To Beatrice I turned me, and she heard before I spake and smiled to me a sign that made the wings of my desire increase. Then in this wise began I, Love and knowledge, when on you dawned the first equality, of the same weight for each of you became, for in the sun which lighted you and burned with heat and radiance, they so equal are that all similitudes are insufficient. But among mortals will and argument, for reason that to you is manifest, diversely feathered in their pinions are. Whence I, who mortal am, feel in myself this inequality, so give not thanks save in my heart for this paternal welcome. Truly do I entreat thee, living topaz, set in this precious jewel as a gem, that thou wilt satisfy me with thy name. O leaf of mine, in whom I pleasure took, e'en while awaiting, I was thine own root. Such a beginning he in answer made me, then said to me, That one from whom is named thy race, and who a hundred years and more has circled round the mount on the first cornice, a son of mine and thy great-grandsire was, well it behoves thee that the long fatigue thou shouldst for him make shorter with thy works. Florence, within the ancient boundary, from which she taketh still her tears and nuns, abode in quiet, temperate, and chaste. No golden chain she had, nor coronal, nor lady shod with sandal shoon, nor girdle that caught the eye more than the person did. Not yet the daughter at her birth struck fear into the father, for the time and dower did not o'errun this side or that the measure. No houses had she void of families, nor yet had thither come Sardanapalus, to show what in a chamber can be done. Not yet surpassed had Montemallo been by your Uselitojo, which surpassed shall in its downfall be as in its rise. Belincion Berti saw I go begirt with leather and with bone, and from the mirror his dame depart without a painted face. And him of Nerli saw, and him of Vecchio, contented with their simple suits of buff, and with the spindle and the flax their dames. O oh, fortunate women! and each one was certain of her own burial-place, and none as yet for sake of France was in her bed deserted. One o'er the cradle kept her studious watch, and in her lullaby the language used that first delights the fathers and the mothers. Another, drawing tresses from her distaff, told o'er among her family the tales of Trojans and of Fessole and Rome. As great a marvel, then, would have been held a Lapo Saltarello, a Chiangela, as Cincinnatus or Cornelia now. To such a quiet, such a beautiful life of the citizen, to such a safe community, and to so sweet an inn, did Mary give me, with loud cries invoked, and in your ancient baptistry at once, Christian and Cassia Guida I became. Moronto was my brother, and Eliseo, from Val di Pado, came to me my wife, and from that place thy surname was derived. 
I followed afterward the Emperor Conrad, and he begirt me of his chivalry, so much I pleased him with my noble deeds. I followed in his train against that law's iniquity, whose people doth usurp your just possession through your pastor's fault. Thereby that execrable race was I released from bonds of the fallacious world, the love of which defileth many souls, and came from martyrdom unto this place. Canto 16 O thou our poor nobility of blood, if thou dost make the people glory in thee, down here where our affection languishes, a marvellous thing it ne'er will be to me, for there where appetite is not perverted, I say in heaven, of thee I made a boast. Truly thou art a cloak that quickly shortens, so that unless we piece thee day by day, time goeth round about thee with his shears. With you, which Rome was first to tolerate, wherein her family less perseveres, yet once again my words beginning made, whence Beatrice, who stood somewhat apart, smiling, appeared like unto her who coughed at the first failing writ of Guinevere. And I began, You are my ancestor, you give to me all hardihood to speak, you lift me so that I am more than I. So many rivulets with gladness fill my mind, that of itself it makes a joy, because it can endure this and not burst. Then tell me, my beloved root ancestral, who were your ancestors, and what the years that in your boyhood chronicled themselves? Tell me about the sheepfold of St. John, how large it was, and who the people were within it worthy of the highest seats. As at the blowing of the winds a coal quickens to flame, so I beheld that light become resplendent at my blandishments, and as unto mine eyes it grew more fair, with voice more sweet and tender, but not in this modern dialect, it said to me, from uttering of the Ave till the birth in which my mother, who is now a saint, of me was lightened, who had been her burden. Unto the lion had this fire returned, five hundred fifty times and thirty more, to re-inflame itself beneath his paw. My ancestors and I our birthplace had, where first is found the last ward of the city, by him who runneth in your annual game. Suffice it of my elders to hear this, but who they were and whence they thither came, silence is more considerate than speech. All those who at that time were there between Mars and the Baptist, fit for bearing arms, were a fifth part of those who now are living. But the community that now is mixed with Campi and Sertaldo and Ficine, pure in the lowest artisan, was seen. Oh, how much better twere to have as neighbors the folk of whom I speak, and at Galuzzo, and at Trespiano have your boundary, than have them in the town, and bear the stench of Aguglione's churl, and him of Signa, who has sharp eyes for trickery already. Had not the folk which most of all the world degenerates been a stepdame unto Caesar, but as a mother to her son benignant? Some who turn Florentines, and trade and discount, would have gone back again to Simifonte, there where their grandsires went about as beggars. At Monte Morlo still would be the counts, the Serci and the parish of Acone, perhaps in Valdegrieve, the Buen del Monte. Ever the intermingling of the people has been the source of malady in cities, as in the body food it surfeits on. And a blind bull more headlong plunges down than a blind lamb, and very often cuts better and more a single sword than five. If Luni thou regard, and Orbisaglia, how they have passed away, and how are passing Chiusi and Sinigaglia after them, to hear how races waste themselves away will seem to thee no novel thing nor hard, seeing that even cities have an end. All things of yours have their mortality, even as yourselves, but it is hidden in some, that a long while endure and lives are short. And as the turning of the lunar heaven covers and bears the shores without a pause, in the like manner fortune does with Florence. Therefore should not appear a marvellous thing what I shall say of the great Florentines, of whom the fame is hidden in the past. I saw the Uchi, saw the Catalini, Filippi, Gressi, Ormani, and Alberici, even in their fall illustrious citizens, and saw as mighty as they ancient were, with him of La Sanella, him of Arca, and Soldanier, and Ardinghi, and Bostici. Near to the gate that is at present laden with a new felony of so much weight that soon it shall be jetsam from the bark, the Ravignani were from whom descended the county Guido, and where the name of the great Bellincione since hath taken. He of La Presa knew the art of ruling already, and already Galigaggio had hilt and pommel gilded in his house. Mighty already was the column Ver, Sacchetti, Giuoci, Fifant and Barucci, and Galli, 
and they who for the bushel blush. The stock from which were the Calfucci born was great already, and already chosen to curule chairs the Sizi and Ariguchi. Oh, how beheld I those who are undone by their own pride, and how the balls of gold Florence enflowered in all their mighty deeds! So likewise did the ancestors of those who evermore, when vacant is your church, fatten by staying and consistory. The insolent race that like a dragon follows whoever flees, and unto him that shows his teeth or purse, is gentle as a lamb, already rising was, but from low people, so that it pleased not Uberton Donato, that his wife's father should make him their kin. Already had Caponsacco to the market, from Fessol descended, and already Giuda and Infangato were good burghers. I'll tell a thing incredible but true. One entered the small circuit by a gate, which from the della Pera took its name. Each one that bears the beautiful escutcheon of the great baron whose renown and name the festival of Thomas keepeth fresh, knighthood and privilege from him received, though with the populace unites himself, to-day the man who binds it with a border. Already were Gualterotti and Importuni, and still more quiet would the Borgo be, if with new neighbours it remained unfed. The house from which is born your lamentation, through just disdain that death among you brought, and put an end unto your joyous life, was honoured in itself and its companions. O Buon del Monte, how in evil hour thou fledst the bridle at another's promptings! Many would be rejoicing who are sad if God had thee surrendered to the Ema the first time that thou camest to the city. But it behoved the mutilated stone which guards the bridge, that Florence should provide a victim in her latest hour of peace. With all these families, and others with them, Florence beheld I in so great repose, that no occasion had she whence to weep. With all these families beheld so just and glorious her people, that the lily never upon the spear was place reversed, nor by division was vermilion made. End of The Divine Comedy Paradiso, Cantos 12-16, to by Dante Alighieri and translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow.